assisting from here. Uh, we've got three other instructors, they're not here yet, they've got other commitments. Um, some will be arriving very early this morning and uh, one bit later on tonight. So you get to meet them throughout the weekend, some of you have already met them. What I'm going to do now is just give you a briefing on how uh, the weekend's going to run, so you've got an idea of uh, what's required from you and uh, <coughs> a bit of an idea of what to expect. First of all, I'll give you a um, briefing on the area we'll be working in. As you can see, it's um, very rugged and uh, very mountainous. The main ridge line is the Razorback, and it's very rocky, and it's uh, covered in areas with de dense forest, and also some, uh, there are scattered areas, as over here, uh, pine forest. Right. Uh, there are numerous creeks in the area, that uh, go around here, which follows basically the ridge line, and it's very good drinking water, very fresh water. Uh, there are numerous tracks, there's one a main track that goes across the top of the uh, ridge line, and the main areas that will concern you for the weekend, firstly, uh, for the level one people, the first timers, is Mount Sugarloaf. That's where you'll be conducting your uh, roping and climbing activities. And the level two people, you'll be concerned with Ned's Peak, which is in this area here. Um, as I said, there are uh, dense forests and down in the lower levels of the, uh, the ridge line it is uh, areas of scattered um, peppermint right, and uh, some thorny type uh, low, low scrub right, and numerous boulders all over the place. Okay, so that's um, basically the topography of the area. Are there any questions on that? Your mission for this weekend is to have fun right? and to participate in as many activities as possible. Right? Some of you might find that uh, you'll have problems with certain activities. Uh, it's up to your team members to encourage you to, to go uh, and have a go at as many things as you can. Right? So your mission primarily is to have fun this weekend. Execution general outline. Okay? This will be conducted in four phases. Right? First phase will be physical training. Second phase will be martial arts training. Third phase will be roping and climbing. And the fourth phase will be team building activities. All right, groupings and tasks. All right, I am the senior instructor of uh, this activity and it's my responsibility for the overall range of the camp and the overall safe conduct of it. The um, OIC of all the climbing and roping activities is Robert Randall, who's not here as yet. Um, Derek Klein here is um, one of the roping supervisors and he's also one of the medics. Robert Randall is also one of the medics for the camp. Um, Derek will be um, tasked with me looking after the, the group two, um, level two. And uh, we also have JJ, who's not here as yet, we'll get to meet him later on, and uh, he'll be in charge of all the physical training, as well as um, some martial arts activities, and also be assisting with the roping and climbing activities. Uh, Jeff Black will also be turning up later on, and he'll be also assisting with the roping and climbing. Teams, right, um, I've left the teams at this stage because I wasn't sure exactly who was going to turn up. So I will allocate you uh, into teams by tomorrow morning. And for the duration of the camp, <coughs> you'll conduct a number of activities in those team identities and a number of activities as a course. Okay, coordination instructions, timings. Right. Timings to all activities, you'll be advised prior to each activity where you are to attend and at what time. Right. Uh, I must stress at this point that uh, in the past, normal Zendokai camps have run on flexible timing. Okay, that is not the case here. Right. We have numerous activities and uh, timings are critical if we to get drawn. Right. So if you're told to, to turn up somewhere at a certain time, get the team together and make sure you're there. Okay, administration and logistics. Okay, rations. All right, uh, the majority of your meals will be freshly cooked. However, um, you will have one meal which will be a cut lunch for the outdoor place. Uh, at 
meals uh, will be required to put the tables out and also to uh, wash your own cutlery and, and plates, etc. Right, and uh, give the floor a sweep after the meals. By team. Say again? By team. Yeah, by teams. Right, um, clothing. Okay. Prior to each activity, you'll be notified as to what you're required to wear. Um, so you're suitably dressed. Specialist equipment, you'll be issued specialist equipment as required. Medical. Right, uh, any medical problems, see either uh, Derek or um, Robert Randall, and uh, they'll look after you. In case of um, emergency, uh, we will build a stretcher, provide a stretcher and carry you out to a, the, the nearest vehicle and get you to Marysville where the nearest hospital is. <laughs> okay, command and six. Seniority. Okay, seniority um, is myself. Okay. If I get killed, <laughs> Robert Randall takes over. Alright. If, if he gets killed, JJ takes over. Alright, then it's Derek and Jeff. If we all get killed, then you can find amongst yourselves. <laughs> Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, time. Time is nine for them. Okay, what I'll do now is uh, <coughs> put on a video for you so you get a bit of an idea of some of the things you'll be doing tomorrow. Uh, watch some experts at it and uh, see if you can um, do the same things then tomorrow. Okay, car broke it down like happens with me every now and then. Alright, um, I get called Randy, it's only because it's my nature, right? But don't worry about it, right? Okay, now mate, how are you? What's your name? I didn't get your name before, what is it? Matthew. Matthew, how you going Matthew? Nice to know you mate. Good on you. Okay, as Bill has pointed out, uh, yes I have been in the army for some time, I still am. And uh, yes, uh, we're going to go through some, uh, some survival techniques. Or well, not techniques, but some uh, theory on it. The deal is that um, there are some people that have been here before and have done survival out in the bush with me, such as snares and brutality. Uh, this time we've gone away from that and we've gotten into the, the cold region such as it is up in this area here. And it's likely that you are going to experience the cold weather, but not a great deal where you're going to get frostbite and brutality. Obviously enough, some of you guys are intrepid and some of the women are as well, and you're likely to go skiing and uh, do all sorts of YouTube things. There are times you get caught out in it. Some of the well-experienced people get caught out in the weather and uh, sometimes they forget what they're doing and whatever, lose their lives and also uh, their weight and get back mighty sick. Even the best of the best come back with frostbite, loss of feet and loss of hands. They're the extremities, right? Okay, so what I intend to do now is to, to go through some uh, overhead stuff, OHP stuff, which covers the dress that you'll wear and uh, some of the gear and uh, also um, what you do in the event of an accident, what you would do in the event of getting lost and various other things. Some of the uh, international codes that we use on aircraft flying by, if you need something uh, from there you can't telephone them up in the sky there, but they can read from the top if they put in a helicopter, such as police rescue. Search and rescue come across the top, you require something straight away, they can drop it to you, all right, by a helicopter or whatever. Followed by some slides and, and so on down the line. So uh, any questions? Don't hesitate to ask. If I don't know them, I'll find out for you and let you know uh, next year. How exciting is that? <laughs> all right. So first of all, um, let's look at um, let's look at the cold weather. Um, and I'll, I'll get you to participate as well. Just put your thinking caps on. We're not here to be dummy bunnies, and uh, I'm not here to test you out because you haven't done it before. So everybody's been to the snow here. Yep. You been to the snow? Oh, come on, you've been to the snow. Hey, great stuff. 
All right, so you know that it does get cold, you do get wet. And not only that, when you're walking in it and working hard up hills and down dark, what are you doing at all times? You're perspiring, obviously. And therefore you've got to drink a lot of water. And sometimes because it's so cold, you feel as though you don't want to drink. All right? So we get uh, dehydration. We get hypothermia because it's cold and hot and all that sort of stuff. So what do we do? We've got all these tight clothes on, woolly stuff and all the rest of the stuff. So what are we going to do? We're sweaty inside. The wind chill factor comes along. And we'll talk about the Baker scarf shortly, about wind chill. And in fact, I've had experience in Antarctica where a guy has died in Antarctica. The catabatic winds have come up and 200 miles per hour. His wrist was were sharp. Everything else was covered up. He was covered up with all sorts of UV things. But what happened? The wind blew across there, took all his heat away and he died. When they found him, he was still alive, but they mishandled him. They handled him with rough and gruff method, so therefore giving fibrillation of the heart and he died because of that, because they didn't know what to do. I wasn't there at the time, but I was on station when it would happen. I wasn't taken out to the task because they had other personnel to do that. My task was something else. All right, so further down the line, what we've got to look at is loose and, and, and laid clothing. So for argument's sake, tomorrow if we go for a walk, you're going to experience this. You're going to feel hot. You're going to feel sweaty inside. You'll feel the wind blow across the front of you. You'll start to feel sweaty inside and, and wet, and you're wet inside the whole time. If it's raining, it's the same deal. You're wet on the outside, you're wet on the inside. So what you do, you must take the plunge off. Because I'm feeling warm now. I've got excited because I'm talking to you people. That's another method of getting hot, okay? It's not the ladies, it's the guys. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> All right? All right, so that's, that's, that's where we stand. So what we've got to do is start taking clothes off. And you can't have big buttoned up stuff that's going to take for hours. Because what are you going to do then? You're going to cool down again. So you're back to square one. So you take off one t-shirt, put it in your pack, ready to go back on when you stop. Yeah? Loose and laid clothing at all times. So you must ventilate. So anybody that's taken you for a walk, they've then got to have that experience and say, right, now we're going to ventilate 10 minutes up the track. And as we know, guys are four degrees higher than female at birth. And after 40 years of age, when the guy becomes 40 years of age, he starts to drop off one degree. And he comes back to the female standard, which is four degrees at that level. And they stay at that level right through life. All right? They're after 40 years of age. Some may all have difficulty in, uh, in doing that and all the rest of the death. So that's how it goes. 